we shall now move on to our next section section 1.3 the axiom of completeness let a be a subset of the set of real numbers r and if all the elements of the set a are less than or equal to some real number b then we say that the set a is bounded above and b is called the upper bound of the set a for example this is a real number line from minus infinity to infinity or the set of real numbers i take a subset of the set of real numbers i take a as a open interval minus 3 2 now you can see that all the numbers here in a are less than or equal to 5 so we say that a is bounded above and 5 is an upper bound of a now let uh, a be any subset of r if every element of a is greater than some real number l or L is less than every element of the set A, then we say that the set A is bounded below and the number L is called the lower bound of the set A. For example, look at the same example A is equal to minus 3, 2. You can see that every number here is greater than or equal to minus 4. So we can say that the set A given here is a bounded below and minus 4 is a lower bound of the set A. So this is the first thing which we have discussed. If A is a subset of R is bounded above if there exists a number b in R such that a less than or equal to b for all a element of capital A, then the number b, this number b is called the upper bound of the set A. Similarly, a set A is bounded below if there exists a number L element of R such that L is less than or equal to A for every a element of capital A, the number L is called the lower bound of the set A. We have seen examples for this. Now we have another definition. Suppose A is a subset of the set of real numbers R and S is any real number. We call S as the least upper bound of the set A if it satisfies two conditions. The first condition is that S is an upper bound of A and second one is that if B is any other upper bound of uh, A then S will be less than or equal to B. So if these two conditions are satisfied we call S the least upper bound of the set A. The least upper bound of the set A is also called the supremum of the set A and is denoted as a SUP A. It is read as supremum of A. We shall look at an example here. The same example which we have, we have discussed earlier. This is the open interval minus 3 2 taken as a this is a set a open interval minus 3 2 plus 2 any number 
greater than 2 is an upper bound. If this is 3, 4, 5, 6, all the numbers greater than 2 are upper bounds of A because the elements of A are less than 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or whatever number greater than 2. Now you can see that 2 is also an upper bound of this set because all the elements of A are less than or equal to 2. Now when you look at the upper bounds of the set A, there are many upper bounds 2, 3, 4, 5 etc are all upper bounds of the set A. Now the smallest one among the upper bounds of the set A is 2. That element is called the least upper bound of the set A or we call it as the supremum of the set A. So in this example, the supremum of the set A or the least upper bound of the set A is the smallest among the upper bounds that is 2. Now let A is a subset of R and I is any real number. Then we call I as the greatest lower bound of the set A if it satisfies two conditions. First one is that I is a lower bound of A. And second one is that if L is any other lower bound of A, then L will be less than or equal to I. So if these two conditions are satisfied, we call I as the greatest lower bound of A. The greatest lower bound of A is also called the infimum of A. And in short, we write it as INFA. We read it as infimum of A. Now look at the same example here. Open interval A is open interval minus 3, 2. Here you can see that any number less than minus 3 is a lower bound of A. If you take minus 4 or minus 5 or anything, any number which is less than minus 3, you can see that all the elements in A are greater than minus 4, greater than minus 5, greater than minus 6 and so on. Now you can see that minus 3 is also a lower bound of A. Why? Because all the elements in A are greater than or equal to minus 3. Okay. So the lower bounds of set A are minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6 etc. And if you look at these lower bounds, the greatest among them is minus 3. So the greatest lower bound or the infimum of the set A is minus 3. Now, this is a definition in formal. A real number S is the least upper bound for a set A subset of R if it meets the following two criteria. The first criteria is S is an upper bound for A. Second criteria is if B is any other upper bound for A, then S will be less than or equal to the least upper bound is also called the supremum of the set A and it is denoted as SUP of A, read, read as supremum of A. Now since here S is the least upper bound means supremum, we write S is equal to supremum of A. Now the next one, a real number I is the greatest lower bound 
for a set A subset of R if it meets the following two criteria. The first criteria is I is a lower bound for A. The second criteria is if L is any other lower bound for A, then L will be less than or equal to I. The greatest lower bound is also called the infimum of the set A. We will use the notation I is equal to infimum A. As I, we have taken it as the greatest lower bound or the infimum. I is equal to infimum of A. Here we have a remark. The least upper bound and the greatest lower bound of a set, if they exist, are unique. That means if at all a set has a least upper bound or a greatest lower bound, they will be unique. That means it can have at most one least upper bound and at most one greatest lower bound. We have an example here. Let A is equal to set of all 1 by n such that n element of n which is a set of natural numbers. So if you expand this set or if you list the elements of this set, this will be set uh, 1 by 1 which is 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4 etc. Now if you list all the elements it will be 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 5, 1 by 6 etc, 1 by 100. 1 by 101 etc it will go on now if you look at this set carefully the largest element of this set is 1 and the elements as it goes on the elements will tend to 0 it will come very close to 0 but it will not become 0 so you can see that all the elements of this set lies in between 1 and 0. It takes the value 1 but it will not take the value 0. So you can see that 1 is an upper bound of this set. Even 2 is an upper bound, 3 is an upper bound, 4 is an upper bound but the least upper bound or the supremum of the set A Supreme of the set A means the least upper bound of A is 1. Now you can see the elements of this set come very close to 0. They tend to 0 but it will not become 0. So we can see that 0 is a lower bound of this set. Any number less than 0 is a lower bound of this set. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. All are lower bounds of this set. The greatest among the lower bounds of this set is 0. So we say that uh, infimum of this set A is 0. Why infimum is 0? Because no number greater than 0 can be a lower bound. As all the elements lies between 0 and 1 and uh, almost all the elements are very close to 0, we cannot find a number greater than 0 which is a lower bound. So infimum of A means the greatest lower bound of A will be 0. Now note that Supremum of A is 1. This is an element of A. And infimum A equal to 0 which is not an element of A because however large n may be 1 by n will not be 0. So supremum of the set will be 1 and infimum of the set will be 0. We have seen that supremum of A is 1 and infimum of A is 0. Now there is a remark. It is evident from this example that supremum A and infimum A may or may not be elements of the set A. So we have seen that the supremum is 1 which is an element of A and the infimum is 0 which is not an element of A. So what this remark says that uh, there are possibilities that infimum and supremum are both elements of A, both not elements of A or 
one of them may be element of A. So it is not, we cannot say that supremum will be in this set or will not be in this set. Same with infimum also. Definition, maximum and minimum of a set. So we have a set here A, A is a subset of a set of real numbers R. A number A naught element of A is said to be a maximum if A naught is greater than all the other elements of greater than or equal to all the other elements of A. Now A1 element of A is said to be a minimum of uh, A if A1 is less than or equal to all the other elements of A. Okay. Point to be noted is that the maximum element A0 and the minimum element A1 should be elements of A. So maximum and minimum are different from the supremum and infimum of a set. It is not necessary that supremum and infimum should be elements of the set but maximum and minimum will be the elements of a set.